Lambton County was about to change hands again. After the first contact was made with Europeans, the British monarch issued the Royal Proclamation of 1763. It laid out the rules for Indian territories to be transferred to a non-Indian government. It was to be done by treaty on a nation-to-nation -nation basis. There were certain criteria to be met, and a number of these land cessation treaties exist today. Unfortunately, culture clash caused great misunderstanding as to what exactly these treaties meant. To straighten this out, one must delve into the discipline of cultural anthropology. First, let's look at the Western understanding of the treaty process. Most will get this having been immersed in Western culture in its understanding of private land ownership. The Government of Canada and its predecessor, the British colonial government understood the treaty as a legal instrument transferring land title from one nation to another. Where did they get this idea? From the component of their culture labeled religion, specifically the biblical creation story. And God said to be fruitful and multiply and subdue the earth, and have dominion over all the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Genesis 1 and 28. This puts humanity at the top of the hierarchy, and in command over their environment. From this springs a concept of land ownership. But what about the First Nations perspective? Our worldview is informed by our creation stories. I think this can be best explained by specific example. Here is a very abbreviated version of an Ojibwe story. The Creator made humans last, and they were weak, naked, and totally vulnerable to the elements. So he called a council with all the spirits of his creation to ask them if they would give of themselves to ensure the people's survival. They agreed to give themselves up when required in order for the people to survive. This shortened version of the story places humanity at the bottom of the hierarchy and continually thankful for our environment we own nothing. When first contact was made, the Ojibwe were trading with our neighbors, the Huron. They were an agrarian society. While we were hunter-gatherers, we would trade our surplus fish, meat, and sugar products for their excess corn, squash, and beans. The key word here is trade. We did not trade like Western societies. There was no bargaining or haggling over price. We did not own our surplus because it was a gift from the Creator and His creation. If, for example, one had a bad season and did not have a surplus, the other would give their trade goods as a gift. It would be an affront to the Creator and His creation to withhold their gifts. We call this type of trade Dawid, and it was more akin to sharing than the Western understanding of trade, which means to buy and sell. Let's fast forward to an example of a land cessation treaty. In 1818, an Indian council was held at Amherstburg in Upper Canada to discuss terms of the acquisition of the Huron Tract, a 2.2 million acre tract of land along Lake Huron. The Ojibwe chiefs did not speak English. 
The translator was a Jesuit priest, and the Ojibwe word Dawid would have been translated into English as purchase. Conversely, the English word purchase would have been translated for the Ojibwe as Dawid. The two cultures clashed, creating a misunderstanding of the treaty process. The British colonial government believed the treaty arranged a transfer of land title to them via purchase. The Ojibwe believed they were sharing the use of their hunting territory equally with the government because they had a surplus that their neighbors needed. This misunderstanding of the treaty process was repeated again and again with each treaty signed. The misunderstanding of our treaties continues to this day, with First Nations still waiting for Canada to fulfill its treaty obligations. The dominant culture's understanding of the cessation treaties prevailed. This was the last time control of Lambton County changed hands when it passed from the First Nations to the British colonial government. 